Hello, welcome to the Rory Rogers News Channel. Thank you so much for watching. All right, today we're going to dive into the Competitive Analysis Series, Episode 4, where we dive into Breloom. Now, before I dive into Breloom, I would like to mention two points about this video. One point is about the proofreader of the video, Enchantor, and I would like to thank him for his expertise. And I should note that Sarka 2000 16, 2017-ish, when Roy Rogers News was covering tournaments, Enchantor's name almost always popped up in the semifinals and finals fights in OU in particular. Just to let you know, Roy Rogers News has discontinued covering automated tournaments because that was kind of a legacy series on Roy Rogers News because back before automated tournaments, content creators would have to film tournaments before the tournament is forgotten over the years so i was one of the content creators that would film tournaments so that way the tournament can be preserved in the memories of everybody all right but now that there are automated tournaments now there's no real need for me to film those tournaments so that's why i discontinued the series however the competitive analysis series with certain pokemon some people ask me about pokemon and what the uses are for them so that's why I started this particular series. So thanks again, Enchanto, for your expertise. Much appreciated, and it was an honor working with you on the video. And I did duel you on my other account, but I don't want to reveal too much about what happened in the duel since I respect the privacy of Enchantor. I'd rather not tell you how the duel went. All right, but I'm going to say something else about this competitive analysis series as well. So. I would like to mention that there are a fair amount of women that approach me off camera and sometimes they ask me, hey Roy, you know, when I look at the competitive scene I see a bunch of ferocious Pokemon and I want to be able to play OU but I don't really want to use ferocious looking Pokemon like Hydreigon or Conkeldor. Are there any cute Pokemon that can work? And the answer to this question is yes, there is. And today I'm going to cover one of them, Breloom. Breloom is very adorable. And how I know this is because I have asked two people with a better cuteness barometer than me. And I said, hey, what do you think of Breloom? And the moment that they told me, oh, how adorable. I was like, good. Breloom is an adorable Pokemon I can definitely add to the suggested list when I help out people get into OU. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into Breloom. Right now, let's just pop up the big computer. And let's pop up Breloom stats. Alright, so Breloom's tier is OU. He's typing his grass and fighting. And his resistances are ground, rock, water, grass, electric, and dark. And his weaknesses are poison, fire, psychic, and ice. Those are the times two weaknesses. If you notice by flying, I put times four on flying because flying is pretty much the bane of Breloom's existence. It's not fun to be Breloom when you have to deal with things like Togekiss or Skymarie or anything else with Aerial Ace, or if, let's just say, Pelipper decides to go all out, do Choice Scarf, and then just do Hurricane, it's not fun being Breloom. Also, if you notice one thing about Breloom, I've noticed a lot of its weaknesses. There are a lot of Pokemon here that are pretty common in OU that Breloom is very scared of. Let's just say if Breloom were to face up against a Starmie. I don't think Breloom is going to be too happy at the end of that exchange. Especially considering the fact that Starmie is faster and it has to move Psychic and it will knock out your Breloom most of the time. Alright. Oh yeah, not to mention that there are added threats like Jellicent and Copagregis with Hex. Breloom hates that too. But Breloom users are probably going to tell me, Oh Roy, there is an answer to Jellicent. Seed Bomb. Yes! But you need to put Jellicent to sleep first. And some people who are really good at OU can sometimes outmaneuver your spore, put something you don't want to sleep, like Rotom Wash, because you can handle Rotom Wash normally, 
and then that same OU player is going to switch Rotom Wash right out and go into something like Skarm, and then essentially you're stuck because now you can't spore Skarm. Skarm does Brave Bird, and or if Skarm doesn't do Brave Bird, let's just say you knock out Skarm, no problem. Jellicent comes in and then does Hex. So there are a lot of different ways you can maneuver against a Breloom. But Breloom is a risky tool to use. Be careful when you use one. So let's go ahead and dive into its abilities. So it has a total of three abilities. Now, as of the time of this taping, there are no hidden abilities yet. But when there is, you can switch from Poison Heal to Technician. And there's Bullet Punch Seed and there's Mock Punch, just waiting for Breloom to use for Technician. But let's go ahead and dive into the abilities and I can explain why Technician is so good for Breloom later down the line when hidden abilities are implemented. So the first ability is Effect Spore. So Effect Spore may cause a paralysis, a poison, or cause sleep to your opponent if your opponent makes contact with that Breloom. Let's just say your Darmanitan were to do Flare Blitz, then Darmanitan could be paralyzed, poisoned, or asleep. However, Effect Spore, you're not really maximizing the potential of Breloom. If you want to maximize your potential, then Poison Heal is the best way you can maximize Breloom's potential as of the time of this taping. And because what Poison Heal will do is that it will restore HP if the Pokemon is poisoned. So if Breloom is poisoned, it recovers HP, and the best part about it is that you won't get Will-O-Wisp or put to sleep or anything like that, or Frozen. So, yeah, Breloom can essentially be status immune. It's wonderful for Breloom. And Breloom can just sit there and recover each turn. Yeah, Poison Heal is pretty good for Breloom. And then the hidden ability, which I mentioned earlier, was Technician. So what Technician would do is that it would power up moves that are base 60 power or less. Now why would Mock Punch or Bullet Seed be so good? Because Bullet Seed has a base power of 25, and Bullet Seed hits consecutively. So imagine that with Technician. Oh boy, that's going to do a lot of damage against Pokemon. Or you can have Mock Punch, which can also do a lot of damage, and it's a priority move too. So you hit quite hard. If Caesar with its Bullet Punch is pretty good, then imagine Breloom with its Technician ability. But as of the time of this taping, Breloom does not have Technician yet, but I'm mentioning this that way this video doesn't age fast. I don't have the specifications for how you would use a Technician Breloom in the competitive scene yet. I could mention the sets in a pinned comment of this video once we get more information as to how to use a Technician Breloom. Alright, so let's go and dive into the base stats now. I think you know the ability. So, Breloom, I would say, is not necessarily a glass cannon, but it's not as bulky as Conk. So, Breloom may be a little bit more squishy to use than Conk. But under the right circumstances, Breloom can certainly outperform its competitors. Because Breloom is the only Pokemon with Spore, and if you execute the Spore correctly, then you can be able to outperform the competitors. And there are several sets of Breloom which I can get to in a moment. But let's go ahead and dive into those base stats, shall we? HP is 60, its attack is 130, its defense is 80, its special attack is 60, its special defense is 60, and its speed is 70. All right, now I should note that its speed stat is pretty decent as it outspeeds Caesar under normal circumstances, implying that you maximize attack and speed because Caesar has a base speed of 65, so you beat Caesar by 5 speed points. There are several other threats that you can't outspeed, and I would say things like Hydreigon as an example. If I can tell you how to predict Hydreigon a little later, I just thought I should mention Hydreigon right now. Since Hydreigon has a base speed of 98, there is no way that Breedlip is going to outspeed a Hydreigon. No way. Unless you choice scarf it, but I don't think that's really an efficient way to use Breedlip. Yeah, but there are ways to get the jump on Hydreigon, but I can mention that a little later in the video for Breedlip's sake. Breedlip needs all the help it can get. Alright, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and dive into 
the common variants and the least common variants. All right, let's go ahead and dive into the common Breloom set. And this Breloom set is pretty common when you go into PvP fights, so let's go ahead and read this set right now. So the IVs are HP plus 25, attack is 31, defense is plus 25, special attack doesn't really matter, special defense is plus 25, and his speed is 31. Its EVs are 6 HP, 252 attack, 252 speed. Its nature's adamant, so plus attack, minus special attack. And its moves are, and I can explain what all the moves do a little later, Spore, Substitute, Focus Punch, and then Seed Bomb or Facade for the fourth slot. And then for the item, the Breloom can hold Toxic Orb, and its ability is Poison Heal. Alright, so let's go ahead and explain the moves, shall we? So, Spore. The reason why a lot of people would opt for Breloom is due to its ability to put Pokemon to sleep. In fact, it's the only Pokemon in OU with a 100% sleep rate with the move Spore. And the only issue with the move Spore is that you cannot put your fellow grass types to sleep. So you can't put things like your fellow Breloom or Rotom Mo or a Ferrothorn to sleep. Nor can you put Venusaur to sleep, because I know Venusaur is popping into OU these days, and it's like the time of this taping. So you can't put those Pokemon to sleep. You also can't put Pokemon like Heracross or Milotic to sleep, because those Pokemon have Flame Orb activated, which means that they essentially negate status ailments just like you, because you have the Toxic Orb, and when you activate your Poison ability, you're essentially immune to all status ailments. And then you have Substitute. Substitute is good in case you want to use Focus Punch. Now, Substitute, what it does is it puts a little teddy bear in front of the fight at the expense of some of your HP. However, you recover that with your Poison Heal ability. Substitute breaks once enough attack power has been used against that teddy bear. All right, and what Focus Punch does is that it is a charging move, and if the Pokemon has to deal with an attack, then the Pokemon loses concentration and it can't use Focus Punch. Focus Punch is good for... Well, actually, let me go and read the OU tier, and then I can tell you all the Pokemon and how they fare against some of Breloom's moves, which I can get to a little later. But for now, let me go ahead and read the tiers, and then I can kind of emphasize a little bit as to what Pokemon fold to Focus Punch, and then what Pokemon fold to another move. All right, let's go ahead and dive into the tier right now. So we're going to start off with Cloyster. The problem with Cloyster is that Cloyster is one of the few Pokemon that can address Breloom, courtesy of its skill link ability, which means that it can hit multi-hit moves five times, guaranteed. And Cloyster, all it has to do is just look at Breloom, use Icicle Spear, hit five times. And the problem with Breloom is that it can't do Seed Bomb because Cloyster has a monstrous defense stat. You can't use Focus Punch because, well, the multi-hit moves is, is going to break the sub and then it, Breloom is going to have to deal with an attack, which means that it loses concentration. So Cloyster is one of the few Pokemon that can destroy the strat of sub Focus Punch. I would say something similar to Weavile, but Weavile does not have the skill link ability. But hitting two times is still good enough to make Breloom lose concentration, which means the Focus Punch can't land on Weavile either. That's the problem with Breloom dealing with Cloyster, because so Cloyster does have an answer, and it can knock out Breloom. Then you have Gengar. Gengar can be addressed by Seed Bomb. Chansey can be dealt with by Focus Punch. I mean, once Chansey has to deal with Focus Punch, I mean, the lights are out. I mean, Chansey's done. Like, it, it strips a smile off of Chansey's face. Even with Eevee Light Boost, it's still not enough to save Chansey from a Focus Punch. Then you have Starmie. Starmie folds to Seed Bomb. Gyarados also folds to a Seed Bomb as well. Although Focus Punch, Gyarados takes a little bit more damage since its Intimidate does not activate since Breloom is behind a sub. And a Substitute move negates the Intimidate ability until the Substitute is broken. Then you have Jolteon. Jolteon folds to Focus Punch. Tops folds to both Focus Punch and Seed Bomb. Aerodactyl folds to Focus Punch. Dragonite folds to Facade, or Facade. Facade is how my producer Jerry pronounces it, and then Facade is how Rhoded pronounces it. So you may see me alternate between the two pronunciations. Caesar falls to a Focus Punch. Skymarie falls to a Focus Punch. Kingdra falls to a Focus Punch. Blissey definitely falls to a Focus Punch. 
Tyranitar falls to a focus punch, especially considering the fact that Tyranitar is four times weak to the fighting type moves. I would say that focus punch is deadly for Tyranitar. Palipur falls to a few seed bombs, and then you have Breloom, which falls to focus punch. Your fellow Breloom's do not like to deal with each other's focus punches because that's fatal. Then you have Milotic, which falls to, I would say focus punch does a pretty decent amount of damage, but I would say seed bomb is more attuned for Milotic than focus punches. A Focus Punch still does a decent amount of damage. Salamance falls to Facade, and Infernape falls to Focus Punch. Garchomp falls to Focus Punch. Ludicolo falls to Focus Punch. Heracross falls to Facade. And then you have Lucario, which falls to Focus Punch. Hippodon, which falls to Seed Bomb. Weavile, which falls to Focus Punch. Although, be careful, because certain Weavile variants have Icicle Spear, which break Breloom Sub, and then Breloom loses concentration, and it can't handle the Weavile. Magnezone falls to Focus Punch. Togekiss falls to Focus Punch, although be careful of Togekiss's Hyper Voice, because that can penetrate past substitutes, and be careful of Jolteon's Hyper Voice as well, as that also penetrates through substitutes. Then you have Gliscor, one of the few Pokemon that can deal a pretty heavy amount of damage to Breloom, and on top of that, it also can resist a lot of Breloom's antics. So let's just say you do Focus Punch, Gliscor's resisting the Focus Punch, or you do Seed Bomb. And Gliscor can take the hit relatively well, considering Gliscor has a pretty high defense stat. And then you have the Cade, which Gliscor could take the hit, but the problem is that then you have to deal with Gliscor's possibility of having Rocky Helmet, which can also hurt you as well. And then you have Rotom Wash, which falls to Seed Bomb, Rotom Mo, which falls to Focus Punch, Excadrill, which falls to Focus Punch, Conkeldor, which falls to a Focus Punch, although you can bring some Conkeldor variants to red health, but then at that point you can just use another move and you can shut the lights out on Conkeldor. Bramantan falls to Focus Punch, Cofagregius, one of the few Pokemon that can answer Breloom. You can just do a few Seed Bombs, but if that doesn't work, just switch out. It's better to switch out than to let Cofagregius use Hex and then knock out your Breloom. Uniclus, use Facade. Jellicent, you can use Seed Bomb. Ferrothorn, charge up, use Focus Punch. Chandelure, do Seed Bomb until your sub breaks. Once your substitute breaks, then just switch out. Haxorus, use Focus Punch. The Veninchow, use Focus Punch, because Veninchow is pretty paper when it comes to its defense stat. But it's pretty good in its attack and its speed. Mandibuzz, which falls to Focus Punch, although I'm going to give you a little bit of an advanced play style. So if you can predict when Mandibuzz uses Roost, then you can be able to use Focus Punch and then you can knock out Mandibuzz. But that's a relatively risky play. And if you're not sure as whether or not that Mandibuzz is going to use Roost or Brave Bird, then it is best to switch out because you don't want your Breloom to be knocked out because Breloom is a pretty efficient tool if you can keep it alive. Also, Mandibuzz is immune to Breloom Spore since it has the ability Overcoat, so be careful when dealing with the Mandibuzz. Hydreigon can be dealt with by a Focus Punch, although be careful as some Hydreigon variants have Hyper Voice which can penetrate past the substitute. And then Volcarona you can do Facade, although be careful because Volcarona has Bug Buzz and it can't penetrate past sub. So that is the entire OU tier. And I added Ludicolo and the Heracross as you see them pop up from time to time. And then you have two moves that you can pick from. You can either pick from Seed Bomb or you can pick from the K. Now, the benefit to Seed Bomb is that you can hit ghost types and you can also hit other threats as well. And then you have an answer to Hippodon. Hippodon, you can just use Seed Bomb since Hippodon doesn't like Seed Bomb too much, from, especially coming from the Breloom. And then you also have Facade. Facade is good if you want to knock out Pokemon that are resistant to both Fighting and Grass-type moves. So I'd say Pokemon like Dragonite, or Salamence, or Volcarona. You can knock them out with Facade. The only issue is that you can't really handle Ghost-types too well. So that's the main drawback to each of those moves. So you can pick either Seed Bomb or Facade. You can pick one of those two moves if you're all right with not dealing with ghost types 
then you can pick the Cade. If you need to deal with ghost types, if Breloom is at the helm, then pick Seedbot. I wanted to let you know about your options there for the common Breloom set. If you want your Breloom to have a little bit more special defensive bulk, and this is good for certain threats in OU, I would say things like your Cough Egregious or your Jellicent in OU, then I would say that the Careful variant of Breloom is a good set as well. So what do the specifications of a Careful Breloom look like? Well, let's go ahead and dive into that right now. So the IVs are HP plus 25, attack is 31, defense is plus 25, special attack doesn't really matter, special defense is plus 25, and speed is 31. Its EVs are 252 HP, 6 attack, and 252 special defense. Its nature is careful, so plus special defense minus special attack. Its moves are Spore, Balka, Drain Punch, and then Seed Bomb or Facade. Its item is a Toxic Orb, and its ability is Poison Heal. Now, I mentioned two new moves, Bulk Up and Drain Punch. Now, if you're a defensive Breloom, you should opt to get HP. So, Bulk Up is good if you want to boost attack and defense. That way you can be able to patch up your defense stat on Breloom, since you're not invested in defense. You can be able to patch it up with plus one attack and plus one defense. And, hey, the benefit is that you also get higher hit power, too because you boost your attack by plus one every time you use the move bulk up. Drain Punch is good if you want to sap health away from your target. So let's just say you're dealing with a Pokemon like Tyranitar, which is free HP for you. Then you can be able to hit Tyranitar and you can sap some health away. And then that Tyranitar is down and out. So that's the benefit to Drain Punch. Now I do have to admit that Drain Punch Conkeldor is a little easier to use than Drain Punch Breloom, but each Drain Punch user has its benefits, and each Drain Puncher has its cons. Conkeldor, as a brief example, one of its cons is that it gets burn damage every turn, and your patience does not bode well for Conkeldor. However, with Breloom, you can passively heal. So if you use Drain Punch on a Pokemon, and let's just say you don't sap enough HP to, to sap where it's at the safe zone for Breloom. Breloom can regain its health back gradually. So that's the benefit to a Poison Heal Drain Puncher. And then we have the Dancing Loom. And this was one of the first sets that Enchantor suggested to me. And he said this was a pretty common set, although I think it's more common in a tournament setting, considering the fact that Enchantor is more of a tournament OU player. So he might see Swords Dance Breloom more in tournaments, but so this may be more common in tournaments in an average PvP setting, as I've not seen a Sword Stance Breloom used on me yet. There is a reason why you don't see the Dancing Loom set too often in your everyday PvP fight. Alright, so let's go ahead and dive into the specs right here. So the IVs are HP plus 25, attack is 31, defense is plus 25, special attack doesn't really matter, special defense is plus 25, and speed is 31. Its EVs are 6 HP, 202 attack, 202 speed. Its nature is adamant, so plus attack, minus special attack. And its moves are Sword Stance, Mock Punch, Drain Punch, and then Seed Bomb or Facade. Its item is Toxic Orb, and its ability is Poison Heal. Now, when I read the moves, have you noticed that there has been one move missing here? And this move may be the reason why you want Breloom. This tool is pretty fun to use. The move that's missing is Spore, and instead of Spore, Enchantor decided to opt for Sword Stance, which boosts your attack by plus two, and this is if you're really good in the prediction game. If you're really good at the prediction game to the point where you don't even need Spore to help you out, you just use Sword Stance. Then you have Mock Punch, which essentially is Breloom's version of Quick Attack. It has the base power of 40, and it has identical base power to Quick Attack, but the benefit is that Breloom is a fighting type, so you have a little bit of a stat bonus here that can boost your Mock Punch. But after you boost it with Sword Stance, plus two attack, let's just say that Mock Punch is gonna hurt. That Breloom variant is very risky, and don't use it unless you are good in prediction. And if I do suggest a Breloom set, if you consult with me privately, I am going to suggest that you use Spore since this Dancing Loom is very complicated to use and I would not advise you to 
use this set unless you know how to predict your opponent really well. So I just wanted to put that precaution there with the Dancing Loom. All right, so now let's go ahead and slide over to the not so common set for Breloom. So there are two sets that are not common on Breloom. You have the Impish Breloom set and the Volcarona Trap. Let's go and read the Impish Breloom set. So HP is plus 25, attack is 31. The defense is plus 25, its special attack doesn't really matter, special defense is plus 25, and its speed is 31. EVs are 252 HP, 6 attack, and 252 defense. Its nature is impish, so plus defense, minus special attack. And its moves are Spore, Leech Seed, Drain Punch, Substitute. And its item is Toxic Orb, and its ability is Poison Heal. Now if you notice in this set, why does this particular Breloom have the Drain Punch instead of Focus Punch? Well, that's a good question. Because this Breloom is playing a stall game. If your opponent can't break your sub because your opponent is asleep, then you can essentially just sap health gradually as your opponent is trying to figure out how on earth do I handle this Breloom. And what Leech Seed does is that if it is planted on your opponent, implying that your opponent is not a grass type, so you can't plant on a Venusaur, Breloom, Rotomo, or a Ferrothorn. Your opponent is not one of those Pokemon, then you can be able to plant your Leech Seed on that Pokemon, and then it can sap health away. I should note that there is one way to defeat this Breloom, and that way is known as Tentacruel. Because Tentacruel has the ability to Liquid Ooze, and Breloom cannot heal after Leech Seed, this Breloom saps a lot of health, and it's really good in a stall fight. But I'm a little hesitant to suggest that particular Breloom since that Breloom requires a lot of prediction and since you blank on almost every ghost type. Like if you see Cuff Egregious, you can't really do anything to it unless you can use Spore and Sub and Leech Seed. Even then, Cuff Egregious can just play the good shell game where it just Cuff Egregious switches into something you don't want to Spore and then Cough Egregious keeps spamming Hex at you, then at that point, Cough Egregious would be a dangerous Pokemon for this Breloom. And your subs are going to be broken almost every time you're staring at a Cough Egregious. So Cough Egregious is good at defeating the set as well. And Jellicent too. Jellicent is good since you don't have a Grass-type move. Jellicent is good to defeat this set. Be careful when you deal with certain Pokemon as there are some Pokemon that can defeat the set relatively easily. Only use the set if you know that you can be able to win a stall fight. So that's the Impish Breloom set. Then you have the Volcarona Trap. So for anybody that is having issues with Volcarona, you may want to consult with this one. Although this one takes a lot of prediction as well. So the Volcarona Trap, the IVs are plus 25 HP, attack is 31, defense is plus 25, special attack doesn't really matter, special defense is plus 25, and the speed is 31. Its EVs are 6 HP, 252 attack, 252 speed, and its nature is adamant, so plus attack minus special attack, and its moves are Spore, Drain Punch, Stone Edge, and then you can either pick from three moves now, either Bulk Up, Facade, or Seed Bomb. So you can make this Breloom a coverage Breloom, but I can mention that a little later. Item is a Toxic Orb, and its ability is Poison Heal. Alright, so the reason why I have the fourth slot open is due to the fact that this Breloom... The only reason why this Breloom is used is primarily to trap Volcarona. That's it. If you want this Breloom to set up bulk ups and your attack and defense, and or if you want your Breloom to use Facade or Seed Bomb, feel free to do that. The fourth move can be whatever you want it to be, but Stone Edge is the most important move in this entire setup, as it completely knocks out Volcarona. It shuts the lights out on Volcarona, since Volcarona is four times weak to the Rock Typing. Now, what is Stone Edge? Stone Edge is a Rock Type move that hits pretty hard. The only main drawback is that Stone Edge has a bit of an accuracy decrease from Rock Slide, but Stone Edge does do the job relatively well, and Stone Edge doesn't just address Volcarona, it can also address things like Gyarados as well. Although Gyarados, since you don't have a substitute, you are susceptible to an Intimidate Assault. You can also handle things like Dragonite, and playing you can predict when Dragonite's going to come in. But then again, you can also handle Dragonite with Facade, so you don't really need to worry about Stone Edge. That is how you handle a Volcarona by that Stone Edge move, which is pretty deadly. That is all that I have to offer here for Breloom. So I'm going to shut off the computer here. And now before we 
sign off on our video here. And before we sign off, let's go ahead and dive into our egg move tool, which we can access right now. So although it is not useful for Brelo because Brelo only has one egg move, just like Skymery. Wake up slap. Now, wake up slap is, doesn't really have much use competitively, but there you go. Just in case you want wake up slap on your Breloom, now you know what Pokemon to breed Breloom with. Breloom is also an easy competitive Pokemon to breed since you don't need wake up slap as an egg move. Breloom is a very easy Pokemon to breed for. Yeah, one of the things about Breloom is that even though it's easy to breed and easy to train and the move sets are pretty easy to get. The issue with Breloom is figuring out your opponent and when to use the Breloom at the right time. Once you know when to use your Breloom, then you can start opening up a lot of doors and Breloom can start helping you out winning certain matches. If you are having a little bit of some trouble in the prediction game, then I would say opt out of using Breloom for the time being until you can get your prediction game up and running. But once you're good at reading your opponent, then I would say that Breloom is a really good tool for you because Breloom can open up a lot of doors competitively. And also at the same time, for anybody who wants a cute Pokemon, there we go. All right, let's go ahead and close out this video. Thank you so much for watching. This is the Roy Rogers News channel, and I did have a lot of fun covering Breloom because Breloom, Breloom was a fun tool to use. Don't forget to comment or subscribe to our channel, like the kind of things you hear. And this is the Roy Rogers News channel signing off. Fast Tucker device, Roy Rogers.